Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, Hurricane Track here. Wednesday now, the 28th of May, 2025. I do appreciate you tuning in this afternoon. What I've got for you, we're going to try to address this question. Is anything brewing out there as we get closer and closer to hurricane season? A few rumblings out on social media, different people talking about different concepts. The Central American gyre has come back up again in a few conversations, or at least, I don't know if you're talking about it, but certain people certainly are on social media and yeah there might be a little bit of a hint of something trying to develop as we get into the first week of june so i figured i would address that and we're going to look at invest area 90e the first one remember they go 90 through 99 these invest area numbers we're going to look at that and the chance of some impacts for our friends in mexico over the coming days all right and i'll show you a few other interesting things along the way. At least that's my aim. You know what? We will. We'll start with this. Boy, I tell you what, if your eyes haven't adjusted, I'll give you a second. That is a bright map. It is very loud, right? As they say. What is it? Well, this is all your dry air and even some dust out here, the Saharan air layer. Pretty prevalent. And all that orange color and everything you see through here really does represent dry, stable. Again, some of it is true Saharan air advecting or moving horizontally right off the coast of Africa it gets blown out into the Atlantic a lot of dust and other particulate matter gets suspended in the atmosphere and that's going to move its way across over the coming days spreading through the Caribbean and eventually through the Gulf Coast states maybe providing us with some beautiful late evening sunsets and it should help to squash tropical development even in the face of some other favorable parameters that do appear to be trying to show up. I'll show you that as we continue on. But yeah, early in the year already looking at a pretty large African dust outbreak and just general Saharan air. And by the way, it's not the dust that chokes off systems. A lot of people say that semi-incorrectly. Oh, it's not going to develop because of the dust. The dust is just what we see. The overall symptom and the cause and the underlying mechanism is the Saharan air layer as a whole a warm, stable blanket of air over top the uh, moist and humid tropics, if you will, and the dust is just part of it, just so you know. All right, so CAG, the Central American Gyre, Noah Berggren down there in Orlando, the Fox Station down there. i got to go down there and meet him sometime next time I am in Central Florida. Go by and say hello. A lot of people revere what he says. I think that's the right way you say that. Um, he is certainly trusted and uh, puts a bunch of good stuff out. And I like these infographics. Dylan Federico does something very similar over in Dallas. we got to get him back to Florida. <clears throat> hint, hint. Anyway, Noah is in Florida, and he put this graphic out. What is the CAG? Well, it's a big green circle with an L in the middle of it. That's a simple way to put it. But it's kind of a focusing mechanism. And you get these disturbances that can come along, riding through the trades, uh, maybe a piece of energy comes off of South America, these mountain areas of vorticity. Oftentimes it could be in the East Pack, but it's like a little conveyor belt of energy and focused vorticity that we uh, look for, increased humidity and moisture. And if the uh, conditions allow, every once in a while, a little piece of this energy over here somewhere, and that's the problem, we never know where, will sort of circulate through, take root, and then you can get something that forms and moves up towards the U.S., across the Yucatan, towards Mexico, and then sometimes over the peninsula and out into the southwest Atlantic. But, and as is the case right now, we also do get development through that CAG process in the East Pack. And that's what we're seeing with Invest Area 90E. And we can look at that here on the Hurricane Center homepage. 90, again, those numbers for invest, invest area EP90, that's the, I guess, long form of it. We just shorten it and call it 90E, and those numbers go 90 through 99, and they start over again. It's just a way to sort of designate something rather than saying a blob of clouds over here and a blob of clouds over there. This one, EP90, has a uh, about 100% chance of going on to becoming our first depression and eventually a named storm in the Eastern Pacific. Now here's a really cool graphic from the Tropical Analysis and Forecast Branch, part of the National Hurricane Center. Look, there's a tropical wave on here, and then you have your different isobars through here, lines of equal pressure. There is your monsoon trough, also like a little focusing mechanism. 
And then for whatever reason, us human beings haven't quite figured it out yet. Once in a while, something will take root along the monsoon trough, kind of part of the overall background pattern, somewhat related to the Central American gyre. Uh, and they, they take off. They bundle the energy and they become tropical cyclones. Why some do and why some don't, we still have to figure all of that out. But there it is. And this is what it looks like on the satellite animation. Notice, my friends, it's pretty big, pretty spread out. There's a little area of vorticity maybe concentrating down here, some competing energy up towards the north. This is what I expect to see if we ever get one of these over in the Gulf, maybe coming out of the Caribbean. They're usually large and fairly disorganized, but usually, this is important, is not the same as always. Audrey, 1957. I don't know if it came from a Central American gyre event. It may have. You know, the origins back then, we didn't have satellites prevalent like we do now. Ship reports, land observations, and whatnot. But my point is, once in a while, luckily there's a great while, you do get a very intense hurricane in June. But usually the CAG events, because they come from a broad area of energy to begin with, take a while to congeal, especially in the early part of the season. However, when you get towards the latter part of the season and this phenomenon sets up again, you get the likes of Helene, that came from a CAG event, a CAG as we say, Michael, 2018, and there are other examples as well, but they're usually pretty loosely organized like we see here within Vest Area 90E. Now what's the fate of this system? Well, we look at Dr. Cowan's dashboard here. Boy, I love this. Such an easy way to get a quick glance at everything. The spaghetti plots, if you will. Uh, hey, you know, a couple days ago, I was thinking this would not impact Mexico. Well, things change, and now it could. That being said, it does not look like it'll be particularly intense. At least it doesn't appear that way right now. The intensity guidance, this is for wind. Not very impressive. 50 knots, uh, trying to draw a line there. 50 knots at best or worst, whichever way you want to look at it. However, anything headed up toward the Baja there, and you got plans in Cabo, maybe there's a wedding you're going to, or you want to do some fishing or surfing or whatever the case may be, something heading your way, squally conditions, rainy, could disrupt boating, and certainly flights in and out of the region. It does not take a hurricane to give you problems. It's all about that word impact, and this could bring some impacts. Let's look at it on the GFS. Remember, I said it the other day, this is my favorite layer of the atmosphere, at least from tropical cyclone forecasting, and just the genesis perspective, how they form, this tells me what I need to know. If they look sloppy and ill-organized on this layer, 5,000 feet or so, 850 millibars, if the vorticity just isn't concentrated very much, um, if the foundation's not there, usually m not much happens beyond that. And we can see that pretty clearly here. This is the initial condition. Let's use a color that'll stand out there and contrast pretty good. There we are. Yeah, it's kind of sloppy and spread out over a pretty large area. And if we put this into motion, it never really jumps out as being very strong. Yeah, it bundles up a little bit there, but then it kind of unwinds as it makes its way up towards the southern part of the Gulf of California. But I want to remind you, that is still some moisture. In fact, I say some, don't laugh now, it's not much, all right, admittedly. Let's back this up. Pretty good moisture pouch with it now, but boy, it kind of dries out there. And I kinda, I'll show you why in a minute, part of the reason why anyway. But the humidity values of the mid-level of the atmosphere really drop off. But some of that moisture could advect, there's that word again, move laterally out of the tropics down here, the East Pack as a whole, across Mexico and maybe crossing the Rio Grande into Texas. But this circulation, not very robust, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. Now one thing that might be leading to this, I find this to be very interesting. Water temperatures, the anomalies, the departures from average, look at this, it's not a very large area of abnormally warm water at all. And I realize the map doesn't extend all the way out to the west beyond about 130 degrees there of longitude, but this is our area that we really watch. That's not a huge area of real estate for our systems to deal with this year. And the more we get early to mix this up, 
that could be interesting because usually when we don't have a lot of activity over here, especially intense hurricanes, the lack of intense hurricanes in the eastern Pacific usually means a pretty busy Gulf and Caribbean overall because you don't have as much competing motion, upward motion, dry sinking air from the outflow that comes from eastern Pacific cyclones, that, that air isn't sinking and spreading out and drying out on the other side of Central America. So that's just something to watch. Um, interesting, you know, we don't have a really intense system forecast uh, despite some pretty warm water temperatures through here, but boy, they really do drop off, uh, at least from the anomalies perspective. And one more thing about it, that is really cold relative to average. We're talking two to three degrees Celsius colder than we're normally used to seeing. So that could be a factor in this year's hurricane season. Now, one thing that's interesting to me when I'm trying to figure out, is there something to be concerned with? Uh, we have the internet, you know, between Facebook and Twitter especially, with people that put all kinds of stuff out there. Some of it's good, some of it's bad, and some of it's downright ugly. We know that. But an old friend, an old throwback to just, you know, you really want to learn something, storm2k.org and go over there to their thread. They're always running thread about the day 16 uh, outlook through day 16. They even have one for day 16 and beyond where we can cordially and totally like working with each other figure this kind of stuff out, looking at models and discussing without there being any shenanigans. And usually when this is quiet, and I don't see a lot, a couple of graphics thrown in here and there, some animations, when this is quiet, you know, usually we don't have to worry too much. There's Josh Morgerman posting some stuff. This was yesterday. And when this is busy and full of all kinds of ensemble posts and you start to, I mean, look, you get the consensus of the models and then you get the consensus of the crowd. And this crowd over at Storm 2K, when you don't have a bunch of stuff being talked about, uh, usually I don't worry about it too much and I don't have to dig too much myself. It helps me. But look, people really do... Uh, post very helpful, insightful information. And, you know, we have, again, the, the instantaneous access to stuff like uh, Twitter and the Facebook there, trying to drop me off to move to my next tab. But the old Storm 2K really does help me out when I need it. I love it. And uh, when it's quiet, generally, if it's not rumbling, I don't worry about it too much. That's a good way to put it. All right? And to prove that point, why is it pretty quiet over there right now? This is today's 12Z GFS, again, that 5,000-foot level. And out to the next week, not much at all to speak of in the Atlantic Basin. Let's stop it at 168 hours. Look at the flow coming through brisk trades right through Central America into the Southwest Gulf. Maybe another piece of energy tries to pinch off south of El Salvador. That's 168 hours out. Hey, look at that. That closed little height line right there hot over the southeast United States. Moisture return on the west side. You know what that's going to mean? More severe weather. We'll talk about that on Monday. This is 99.9% .9 tropics today. All right, back to the map. I wanted to show you this. Let me get back on. First of all, thank you to those who have ordered recently. It really means a lot to me because this big old paper map is truly a work of art. I'll show you full screen, so to speak. You know, we've got the apps, we've got online tracking maps, and those are certainly wonderful. They can do a lot that the paper can't. But the old school art of cartographic hurricane tracking, I don't want it to be lost. I print these up for our patrons. We always have a bunch left over because I always have to print more than I need. So I want to sell them. And I don't sell them for some exorbitant amount of money. I just try to make a little, maybe to buy some more equipment or something. But the main thing is to know that you have got a piece of my artwork because I drew that map. I know you've heard this before, but I drew it, and I'm proud of it, in Adobe Illustrator way back in the late 90s. I've modified it over the years, and it truly is one of a kind, all right? So if you want one, we'd love to send it to you. That's how you order through PayPal or Venmo. There's the information. And if you need a bunch of them, do email me, and I can send them to you uh, in a tube or something like that. If you're ordering just one, I fold them up twice over with a nice sharp crease, and I put them in an envelope. That way it only costs like a buck fifty or something to mail. The tubes just get stupid expensive. Way back in the day I was able to do it in tubes, but I'd have to sell them for like $30. It's in, I don't want to do that. Anyway, that's how you get one if you would like to, and I would love for you to have it. Look at that right there. It's just, come on, one more time. 
that's cool. And I've been doing these since 1996. I, that's when the first Mission Impossible came out, by the way. So there's that. means nothing, but I thought I'd drop that in. All right, that's it for me for now. As always, uh, thank you for tuning in. I am Mark Suddeth, Hurricane Track. We'll talk again soon.